Right, hello there. Um, just going to do another um, blusher, but using the ACW um, rules modifications. So this is going to be um, an American Civil War battle, uh, using the blusher rules, the modified blusher rules. Uh, in front here is the uh, setup. It's a six by four table, using the cigar box battle map. Um, what we've got is um, at the far end we've got um, a farm with some fields. Um, there's a, a little copse of trees there. There's a ridge running along here and in the next valley is another small farm. Uh, here is a hill. This is the highest point on the battlefield and there is some uh, tumble down um, rocks and from past um, you know rock falls and such at the bottom on this side so if we take a closer look at the battlefield right I don't know if this shows the elevation very well but uh, that's the the hill that's the uh, highest point of the battlefields and there is uh, a red disc on the top that uh, symbolizes that it will be an, ob an objective in this battle. Um, there's the rock falls these are going to prove a bit devil denish I would think uh, for any attacking troops um, or defending troops. Now, let me just lose my camera a bit so I can turn it. That's better. Right, here we've got a, a farm and this will also be, this farm on this road will also be an, ob uh, an objective, I can't say objective today, objective um, field surrounded by um, hedges which will give some protection if, if troops are uh, in the field or on the field and the field will slow down, um, will slow down movement uh, same as this hill, it's it's, it's not a steep hill, but it, it's. I'm going to class it as rough ground. It's it's going to slow you down. Uh, right. Now I'll try and move you across without shaking too much or kicking the stand, which is what I always tend to do. Now this side of the field, we've got wood here. Oh, between the wood and that farm is just this ridge line, and it runs from here all the way along almost to the back of the table to about here a ridge line it's gentle so it won't hinder movement but of course it would block line of sight from one side of the one valley to the next so we've got um, some trees and we've got another road and another farm now this road and this farm with a red disc is another objective in the battle um, so it's quite um, sparsely I, I would say and um, not so bad but uh, I haven't gone to town there probably should be more trees but I'm looking at this as being it's a lot of it's been cleared for farmland and uh, and so there you have it so that's the battlefield six by four uh, there's a wood at this very end as well so at the bottom of this hill there's only a, a narrow um, flat piece between the wood and the uh, you know the foothills of this big hill um, right uh, let's bring you up a little bit in fact I'll stop the camera a second and I'll come back to you all right don't know if you can read my scribble but uh, these are some notes I made it's the spring of 1863, we're in uh, deep into Confederate lands uh, and the army of the Potomac uh, is advancing on the hooker. Um, what we've got here, or what we will have, will be two Confederate divisions, one under McClaws, with those three brigades, each of that number of infantry regiments. He'll also have two attached artillery which he can attach to any brigade he wants. 
it'll be Anderson's division. Just two brigades of five infantry regiments and again two artillery pieces. And coming up to meet them or to uh, attack them will be the 6th Corps of the Army of the Potomac under Major General John Sedgwick. And he's got the 1st Division, which consists of three brigades um, totaling 14 infantry division, uh, infantry regiments, sorry, three artillery pieces. And 3rd Division, and that will also consist of three brigades, and this consists of 15. 15 infantry regiments plus two pieces of artillery. So that's what it is. And that, if I take this away, is what it equates to on uh, the table. We've got the required, I think it's 29 infantry regiments for the Union and 24 for the Confederates. Um, the six is it six? No, five artillery pieces for the Union over there at the back. Um, we've got the four artillery pieces for the Confederates uh, there. Um, command each each uh, brigade has a brigade commander, so the Union have six brigade commanders. They also have two divisional commanders, which are the single figure with a flag bearer, and they have a corps commander, which is two figures together with a flag. Uh, on the Confederate side, they've got five brigade commanders and two divisional commanders. There isn't anyone in overall con uh, control as such, but McClaw will be. Uh, Will will be the de facto leader, but I'm not going to give him the uh, the extra figure to represent his base. At the front here, we've got some uh, cavalry. That's mounted horse holders and dismounted cavalry. Although they're, the, they're then get the words right. Although they are not on the original sheet there, and some of you may recognise the units as from the Battle of Salem. Um, I've just pinched the uh, order of battle from there for this fictitious battle. So I'm going to have some uh, cavalry, both dismounted and mounted, and also some for the Union. And uh, that will become clearer uh, when I start doing the battle. So, that's the terrain, and that is the forces involved. Um, and in the next part... I'll do a little bit more explaining as, as to why the battles are carried. Right, it's the spring of 1863. It's April actually. Um, yesterday evening, um, Confederate and uh, Union cavalry clashed in this area. Um, on this road was the first clash. Um, Confederates would obviously out scouting as were the Union and they clashed near to this farmhouse. It was just a, a firefight, a uh, couple of casualties either side, but the upshot was was the Union had a second um, regiment of cavalry coming up this road, uh, but unfortunately for them, the Confederates had three regiments of cavalry coming up the same road. Now they all had the shooting, but they couldn't see because of this ridge heard the shooting over there. But what happened was the Union Cavalry went across to see what was going on and of course, uh, sorry, the Union Cavalry went across to see what was going on and the Confederate Cavalry also did the same thing. Um, obviously the Union Cavalry realised they were out number two to one and they pulled back down this this road, well, let me show you, down this road back towards where the Union forces were. Hotly pursued by the Confederate Brigade. Um, it was getting quite late in the afternoon, it being April, what time would it get dark in April? Six, half six, seven, so we're talking about six o'clock time. Um, but the um, the officer commanding the uh, Confederates cover Brigade realised he was running into a, a large uh, Union force 
um, at least a couple of divisions, maybe, uh, maybe more, he wasn't sure. Now, this battlefield is just one part of a battle that's going to rage today. This is just one section of it. Uh, so there'll be, there'll be fighting going on on the other, this right flank and also on the left flank. Um, after he'd scouted out um, what had happened, he instantly went back to uh, General McClaw's headquarters, which was only about three or four miles away, informed him of the situation, what had happened, and about this Union um, force that was very close. And so he was ordered to take his men back, and they camped at each of what is deemed to be the objectives. So one one regiment of the uh, Confederate cavalry have spent the night there. Another one has spent the night here next to this farmer's field. And two, including the uh, cavalry commander, have spent the night over here at this farm. Um, so as dawn approaches, his, uh, all of these uh, troops will obviously be out of the tents and they will be forming uh, a picket line of some description to defend this area until their uh, infantry can arrive and hopefully it will arrive before the Union uh, troops arrive. So that sets the scene. Hopefully uh, it all makes sense because I, I do like a battle to have a reason and a bit of history even if it is a fictitious battle. Um, so I'll leave it at that and uh, give you one last look down the battlefield as um, the sun comes up on this April morning. And uh, I'll be back with you later as the troops start to arrive. Thanks for watching.